Shalom, 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 shalom. I do hope everyone is well. This is a rainy Friday. And I love the rain, but I prefer to be home and not at work. But yeah, it's good. This is the day that you has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I came to um, share with you. You know, the Father is awesome in all of his ways. And he wants us to look deeper. And so on Tuesday, I believe it was when I spoke to you about Queen Bashti and Queen Esther. Because it was in my spirit. And I had seen, you know, a lot of stuff about Queen, women and Queen and da da da. I was like, what is this fascinating with Queen? But it, it rests in my spirit. And that's why I came and I was asking a question. It was impromptu. You know, rainy day, just like today. And um after leaving the bank, I pulled on and on the side. And so after I did that, that Wednesday morning, as I got up, the Ruhr after that spoke to me, the Holy Spirit, and he said, look deeper into Queen, into the Queen. And I was like, okay. And so I went to Google first because I wanted to see who um, in the scriptures were like a list of names of the women that were called queens but they gave me like women who had the title of queen like the category like it was like um the king's mother would be called queen or the king's sister would be called queen or then there was a queen ruler who was the queen of her country like the ruler like how we have the present day queen and then you would have had the the queen's the king's wife was also called queen. So that's what they gave me. So then, of course, I went to my Hebrew concordance to look up queen. And so um, I'm going to share with you what I found, which is very interesting. And then I understood why the Ruawa said to me to look deeper, you know. But um, so there are six Hebrew words for queen. And normally, you know, I'd be sitting in a different environment in my house. But this is from continuation from that. So I wanted to sit in my car. This is still my car talk. But in one thing, I have it written down because I, I need to show you this. So there's six Hebrew words for queen in the scripture. And I only looked at the the, the Hebrew, not the Greek. Um, so the first one is queen, H7694, Shagal. And that's a queen from cohabitation, the consort of an oriental king, his favorite woman or wife. And the scripture reference for that is Nehemiah 2, 6. And in Nehemiah chapter 2 and 6, it was the king of Persia. Um, that's when the Israelites were in captivity. Well, you know, they were always in captivity. <laughs> and so... And then the other reference is Psalms 45 and 9. But then, okay, the second Hebrew word for queen, queen is H1377. Gab Ira, which is a mistress queen. And mistress there is talking about um, a woman in a position of authority or control. Not like the normal mistress that we have. And, and too, it may have been like the queen's mistress. Because, you know, they had concubines. But anyway, she was in a position of authority or control. And the reference there is 1 Kings 11 to 19. And Adar found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh. And Adar would have been, anyway, he would have been an Edomite. Um, but anyway, he found favor in the sight of Pharaoh. So that he gave him to be his woman. Pharaoh gave him to be his woman or his wife, one of Pharaoh's sister, Pharaoh's woman, Pharaoh's wife's sister, okay, to be the queen. And so, of course, the reference is the queen to be his mistress and, you know, to be in a position of um, authority or control. So that's the reference there for that queen. So I'm not sure he may have had other wives, but she would have been one. But anyway, so the second Reference to Second Chronicles 15 and 16. King Asa removed his grandmother, Maka, from being queen because she was, she made an adulterous Assyrian pole. So the two reference there for 
um, the queen as mistress, a woman in a position, authority, position or authority would be in 1 Kings 11 and 19 or 2 Chronicles 15 and 16, right? Okay, so then the second, the third reference for queen is H4446. Um, Malith, Malithath, a queen, a queen, the queen of heaven, a pagan female deity worshipped at Jerusalem may have referred to the Babylonian goddess Istar. And the reference there is Jeremiah 7, 18. The children gathered wood and the fathers kindled the fire and the women knead their dough to make sacrificial by, by, by cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour drink offerings unto other Elohim that they may provoke me to anger. Okay, so the third reference for the queen would be Malethet, a queen or the queen of heaven. And then the fourth reference for queen is H4433, Malkor, and it's the Aramic or Chaldee correspondence to the Hebrew reference to queen, 4436, and that's queen as ruler. And the reference there is Daniel 5 and 10. Now the queen, that's the ruler, by reason of how of the words of the king and his lords came into the ban banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. Okay, so that's queen as ruler. She's speaking to the king. And then we have number five, the fifth reference for queen H4436. Malka, and again, that's queen, a queen as ruler. First Kings 10 and 1. And when the queen ruler, or Queen Sheba, heard of the fame of Sh Solomon, Solomo, Soloma, concerning Yah, she came to prove him or to test him with hard questions. So that's a famous queen, Queen Sheba. We should know the story of her and Solomon. But when she first heard of him and the wisdom, she came being the ruler. To challenge him with hard questions. And so then we have the other references Esther 1 and 12. But the queen ruler Vashti refused to come at the king's chamberlains because therefore was the king very wrought and his anger burned in him. So Vashti was the queen of Persia. So she offers her, she her position, her title as queen was that of a ruler. That is H4436, queen as ruler. So we see that at Vashti and Sheba, it was Vashti and Bathsheba, not Bathsheba, Queen Sheba, who offers their title as queen, put them basically on the same level as the king, as a king, being a ruler. And then also, um, the queen in Daniel chapter 5 and 10. So there were some queens that had the position as ruler and authority, you know, head of their province or whatever. And so then we had, so we see why Vashti, you know, I spoke about Vashti, her attitude. I didn't know this prior to that. But like I said, I was just speaking, you know, out of my spirit. But Vashti was at the, her position was basically on par with her husband. And so... Then we have Queen, the sixth reference for Queen, H446, which is more lack. A primitive route to reign, inceptively to ascend the throne, costatively, you're sending the, the throne to induct, to be inducted into royalty, hence by implication to take counsel. You know, you see the difference in those titles as queen. This person, yes, you're going to be inducted into the position of royalty with the title as queen, but it's to take counsel. And the reference for this is Esther 2, 4. And let the maiden which pleased the king to be queen, one who's able to take counsel, instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. 
No. This would have been the position that Esther Adassa came in to the king, to the palace. When they, the king, after Vashti, who was ruler, decided to walk in her authority and tell the king, I'm not coming to you. She's doing her own thing. I'm sure my my um, parties and whatever, I'm not coming to be uh, no display for you and your friends. Of course, like I spoke, they decided to look for another queen to take her place. But when they were looking for a queen, they looked for someone that was going to take counsel. Okay? Okay. So, the questions that the father threw up put in my spirit to speak. I'm speaking to daughters of Zion. Uh, Isha. Women. Married women. See, and these are some of the things that we got to teach our daughters. So the questions that I've written here is what, when I woke up, this is what he was saying to me. And mind you, I didn't know all this information. Okay? Some I found out and I, I got the understanding of what he was saying when he said to look deeper at the queen. But what is the motive and your desire, the desire of your heart when you're talking to women, married women? Your mindset when you say you're the queen, are you the ruler? You're operating the position of ruler like Vashti and Sheba, or the mistress in position of control and authority in the home like Pharaoh's sister and the queen of and the Pharaoh's sister and the king's mother that he had to put away because of her adultery, um, given orders, or are you in the position of the queen as the idolater, like the queen of heaven, wanting to be worshipped and adored and catered to? Do you, what do you mean when, is your position as queen, meaning that you are poised, ch chaste, have good etiquette, you um, are articulate in your speech? So we were looking at what is the mindset, the motive, your motive behind this declaration that you are the queen. Um, does it speak to your character? Does calling yourself a queen take away from the purpose Yah has created you to be? Woman, help me, submissive servant. Or does it enhance your purpose, making you better? How does the, that desired title of queen improve your relationship with your man, your husband, and children at home? Are you barking out orders all day expecting to be catered to? Okay, I overheard a man complaining about his wife, his woman, and he was expressing in disgust her controlling attitude and domineering. And the question he asks is, who do you think you are? You think you're a queen? And so, in view of what we have just looked at, See, these are the position of queen in the scripture. Where do you fit into one of those? Or are you like Queen Esther? One that's going to take counsel. Again, you know, we really spoke that Esther was a woman. She did not go into... She was not... Um, she was not born into royalty. She was a... And, and, and Babylon in captivity. So the father opened that door because he had a work. He needed her to go in there to be able to save um, his people. So you see, and when, even when they were looking for a queen, you see they were looking for someone completely different from what was. They were looking for someone, a woman that was submissive, a woman that was going to take counsel. And that is why she, Esther, took God the position. You see, and you know, I mentioned that she asked for very little, but went back to the script, she didn't ask for anything. She didn't ask for nothing. She went in there desiring to just please the king. And so the father, the spirit, the Ruah Akadesh is saying to us women, us, be daughters of Zion. When we are walking around, and I've said it, oh, I'm the queen. Because I remember I used to say that my ex-husband abused the king. I'm the queen. <laughs> You understand me? And so he's questioning our heart. And remember I said, it's all about the heart, your motive. 
You see, I never looked at Queen. And so, I, you know, it just stood out to me that day because I was seeing a lot of it on Facebook. And I was like, what is with this? Not knowing that the, the, the Holy Spirit had that resonate, you know, because it caught my attention in my spirit and it, it just stuck. And, you know, and, and my response that day was responding to what I was feeling. What is this fascination? And then he said to me, look deeper because there's something more behind that. You understand me? And that is what he wants me to draw your attention to. You see, worldly influence. Notice that all of those queens except for Vashti was of other nations. You understand me? They were not Israelite. They, they were other nations that were being governed and ruled by their laws. Vash, um, Esther was the only Israelite. And you notice the difference between them, the difference in their personalities, their attitude. Right? It is very obvious. So, he's, we, and let me read what I have. As women of daughters of Zion, we should not be influenced by the world, but we should be the ones influencing the world. We are the light of the world, a set apart people. The world should follow us, not we them. All of the women who have the title of scripture and the queen in the scripture were women from other nations except Esther, like I just said. And she got the title because the men were looking for a woman who could take counsel, not one to rule. The title of queen is a worldly title. It's a worldly title to worldly position. And as I was pondering this, after the Ruah told me to go deeper, to look deeper, I was sitting in my desk and, you know, I'm on YouTube, I'm a YouTuber. And so I got a, a channel and I remember seeing this video before and I love my black sisters because I normally just watch I love black romance movies you know but so I these movie stars they have now this um zoom talk show because they're based on what is going on you know you can't go out like they used to and it's very nice a group of women sitting around talking about different issues but the name of their show is Queens and when I saw it when it's, I said oh because I knew I thought before. Because I keep saying, but why is this word queen keeps stuck in my spirit? You see? And the woman saying that we are allowing them to influence us. We are looking at these women in Hollywood and the way they conduct themselves and the way they dress and the way they carry themselves. And they have this, this feminist attitude. The man is there. What is it that they say? It's like they're toy. It's a, it's an expression that they use, you know, to say that, man, you're supposed to be catering to me. I am the queen, you know, and we don't realize. So we, we have to be, we don't realize the spirit behind some of these words. But we, 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 we gravitate towards them and it sounds so good. Yeah, to be called a queen, it sounds good. It sounds good, but we are not taking note of the spirit behind it. Look at the queens and the scriptures and the spirit behind them. They were not submissive. You understand? They want power equal with their husbands. And those who were um, of a lower level of a queen, like the, 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 the queen mother and stuff, they still was doing what they wanted to do because that king who took the position from his grandmother, he was trying to serve the most high. And she went out making idols so that she had no respect for what he was trying to do. No respect for him because that title, I'm, I'm the queen. You understand me? And so the Most High is saying to us, we have to be so careful taking on worldly titles because they have a lot of unclean spirits attached to them that takes away from the purpose the Most High has created us as daughters of Zion, as women to be. And we have got to, we have got to um, take note of these things. You know, everything seems so, like, so innocent. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, when you saw the other video, you may have been saying, oh, she have a problem with people being called queen. You got a problem with you. You the queen, you the queen. You understand me? At the other video, I was just saying, you know, when you can be looking at a queen, let's look at who truly, and when we, on, when we know, and we all know, when we speak of a queen, what that represents and the kind of 
character, the kind of attitude that comes along with that. But I was saying, okay, when you can talk about the queen and you're looking at Vashti and, and Esther, and we can just see as two different things going on there. You know, so when you're going to speak of Esther as a queen, you got to highlight her qualities as a woman of submission, a woman who wants to please her husband. Highlight the fact that she was an Israelite woman. And that is how the Israelite women are to represent. That's how, that's what we are supposed to be about. We are supposed to be about pleasing our man because we understand our power, our, our position as women. You understand? And so the father is saying to us, what fellowship as light with darkness? What fellowship as righteousness with unrighteousness? If Yah be the most I serve him. He's calling us out. And if Baal be the Baal is your Elohim, then you serve him. But you gotta now decide who it is that you're gonna save. It is obvious that we are under two different systems. Do you understand that? It is obvious. And he's saying to us, come out of her, come out of the world. You understand? Come out of her and separate yourself. Touch not the unclean thing. Leave it alone. You either can be in the world and following what they do and looking like them and dressing them, or you can serve the Most High and you can follow his ways and his commandments and his precepts. And you're going to be the woman that helped me that he has purpose for you to be. But you can't be both. You can't be struggling in the fence. You understand me? And so my admonishment to us, admonishment to us as women, let's look deeper. Let's look deeper. Everything that, listen, the only thing in this world is death. Ain't nothing good come out of this world. So we can't keep thinking that, oh, that's innocent and ain't nothing wrong with that. I saw the other day they had something with something called WAP. And because somebody bring out the sound about WAP and in no minute time, some Christian church has putting on something called VAP. And I'm like, why it is that they always feel that they need to go to them to define who you are? Do you understand? And we think, and, and some of the Christians, they think they get sanctified and saved. And, and, and what they say, they um, sanctified and made it holy. You got to be that to make something holy. But on top of that, why you think the most I need Hollywood? The throne of Satan to bring him glory. And it's the same thing with this queen thing. Why you have to be walking around saying, you're the queen, you're the queen, you're the queen. You know, what is with that? Because you want to receive this attention, this this um, um, recognition and all this stuff. Bigging up your flesh. Which the father is saying to us that we are to die to. We got to take note of these things. It's the saying, all that glitters is not gold. You understand me? We got to realize that the enemy is cunning. He's crafty. You understand me? The scripture tells us he comes as an angel of light. And when you see anything that's in the world, don't take it at eyes, um, face value. Father's saying, look deeper. Look deeper. Because there's something behind that. You understand? And so we've got to be, scripture said to us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And we get, we get these caught up, caught up. There's nothing, listen to me, ain't nothing those women, but much as I, I don't even watch it like I used to. You understand me? But I watch for entertainment. I don't watch to emulate. I can't, I, you could see me letting, and I'm not calling no names because I know the minute you call somebody named people, the things that people hold on to, oh, she, whatever, whatever. no. But I'm not going to let no one who on the TV dress me. I going to follow after you? You got to be out your mind. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I don't even follow them online. I don't follow them on WhatsApp or whoever. What they are on Facebook or nothing like that. Sometimes when I see these sponsorship come from them or whatever, I, I click on it to see why I see in this. I don't want to see nothing. There's absolutely nothing, nothing any of them can say to me that can have an impression on me. I going to buy your clothes? Child not a dasso. Not me. I don't follow up. You understand me? Follow me. I'm the light. I'm the light. I am the one that's supposed to be influencing the world. You have nothing I want. You understand? And so I don't follow. I don't follow them. And we've got to make a separation. 
you know, watching them is one thing, but when you're trying to be them and all this and all this great admiration and, and affection for ungodliness, something is wrong with that. We're going to check that. So anyway, I can suggest, encourage you. The Rua said to me, look deeper into queens because there's something more going on to that. As we can see, draw your attention again. The queens in the Bible, the characteristics um, of those queens. You understand? It was ungodly. It has nothing to do with, I know, saw somebody saying, oh, the, the father had women in position. Yeah, they were not women of Israel. They were women queens from Persia. Um, Vashti was the queen of Persia. Um, what's her name? Sheba. She was the queen, I think they were saying, um, Ethiopia or Arabia or something like that. But they were not Israelite women. They were not Israelite women. And John, I'm a woman of Israel. <clears throat> I'm a woman of Israel. I follow no other. Uh, and I'm encouraging my Israelite women. You follow. We have enough women in our history that we can follow. Women of quality. You understand me? Judith. Susanna. You understand me? Deborah. We have enough women that function according to their purpose as a uh, helpmeet that we can follow than to be emulating these women who can lead you straight down to hell. Okay? So my sisters, take note. Um, I'll put the references in the link. You can look at it yourself. But we have to be careful what we are getting ourselves involved in, what we have drawn our attention to. Because all that's glitters does not go. Look deeper. When anything that comes out of this world system, the Father is saying, look deeper. Look deeper into it because there's more going on than what meet the high. You got to have a discernment in your spirit. Okay? A discernment in your spirit to understand the entrapment of the enemy. Shalom, shalom, shalom. I hope you have a wonderful Shabbat. And rest and enjoy and spend time in the presence of the Most High. And um, I'll see you again very soon. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you much. Praise you.